All right, so lecture nine. In this lecture, we will look at graphs of functions. Okay. We will determine if a graph represents a function or not using something called the vertical line test. Um, when you have vertical line test, there will be a horizontal line test, right? That, but that for later, right um, after the test. But for vertical line test, we'll tell you if the graph represents a function or not. And then we're going to use the graph and determine the domain and range of the functions. Okay. So the vertical line test. So a curve is a curve is a graph of the function. If and only if. No vertical lines intersect the graph at more than one point. So that is the definitions of vertical line test, which tell you how to identify if a graph represents functions. Okay. So we have four different uh, different pictures here, uh, four different graphs. Right. So the first one, y equal to x squared, and you have a two dashed line here, and you say this two dashed line represents vertical lines. Right? for vertical line test. And you can see it just intersects the curve, the blue curve at you know one point. Um, so therefore the first function, uh, the first graph represents the function. And you do the same for the second graph, y equals to x cubed. You place a vertical line, the dash line here, you move back and forth and see how many times it intersects the curve. Obviously it just intersects the curve at one point. So the second graph represents the function as well. That. Now for the third, the third graph, um, you have x equal to y square. And you place a vertical line here, and it's obviously intersect the curve at two points. Right, so therefore, this is not a function. With me on that, any questions? And here you have the circle. You place a vertical line, the vertical line intersect the circle at two places. So this is not, in, uh, not a function. So that's why all the time is when people talk about circle, they talk about the equation of the circle. They never say the function of the circle. That is the reason because of the vertical line test that you have the vertical line intersect the curve or the circle at two different places. Okay. So the first graph is a function. The second graph is also a function. The third graph is not a function. And the last one is not a function. So not a functions. All right. Any questions? Any questions? Easy. Good. All right. Example one. You have again four different graphs. Can you identify if the graphs represent a function or not? Okay. Work with me here. So the first graph is just a collection of points. Uh, is this a function or not? It is a function, right? So the first graph is a function. What about the second graph? Is it a function? No, it's not because of the point at the two point at negative three. And by the vertical line test, it's intersect the graph at two places. So the second graph is not a function. What about the third one? It's not a function either. 
What about the last one, the last graph? That is the function. So here, function. First graph is the function. The second graph is not a function. The third one is not a function. And the last one is the function. Am I moving too fast, too slow, a little bit? All right, uh, next topic, we're gonna find the domain in range using graphs, right? So the definition we wrote down yesterday, the domain is a set of all possible X values, right? So domain, the set of all possible X values now when you try to find the domain using graphs what you do is that you look at the curve and you trace all the points onto the x-axis oh sorry project the point all the points from the graph onto the x-axis. And for the range, definition is the range is the set of all possible y values. When you find the range using graphs, what you do is you protect all the points from the graph onto the y axis. All right, so let's look at example two. We're gonna find the domain in range of graph of a function, okay? And what we do is we're gonna use the, something called the interval notations to indicate the domain in range of the graph. Okay, um, so the domain is all possible X value. You trace the curve and project all the point from the curve onto the X axis. And when you do that, you see the domain is from negative three to positive three. You with me on that? Okay. Now for the range, you do the same thing, trace on the point and then project on the point onto the y-axis. And you see the range is from negative two to positive two. Okay. So in the uh, in this example, the domain including the endpoints, because we have a closed circle. So the domain is from negative three to positive three. And I use bracket to indicate that I want to include all uh, the endpoints. And the range is from negative two to positive two. When you see a closed circle on the graph, that means you want to include the point on uh, the value in the domain. 
include the value in the domain. Slash range. But I want to note it here a little bit. It's not always going to be the case, but you know, for the most part, when you see the closed circle, you can uh, um, you can include that in the range. So for open circle, you exclude the value from the domain or the range. And again, I put a quick note here that's not going to be the same for different cases. And you will see later. Now, for the second graph, what is the domain of this function? Uh, so if you project all the points onto the x-axis, it's going to go from negative 5 to positive 4. But do not include positive 4 because of the open circle right here. You with me on that? So it's from negative 5, including negative 5, to positive 4, but do not include positive 4. And for the range, you project all the points onto the y axis and you get is that negative four? Mm -hmm. Starting at negative four, you go up to positive four. Yeah. But do not include positive four because of an open circle. So negative four to positive four. Fine. And when you write the interval notations or anything related to the real lines, um, you always go from left to right, smaller number to higher number, and from bottom up, right? From the smaller number in the y direction to the higher number in the y direction. All right, the next example, the domain is from negative three, to positive one, right? Do not include negative three because there's an open circle there. But do include the positive one because you have a circle. What about the range? All right, so you go with negative four from negative four to zero, including or do not include zero. How many of you think it's included? How many of you think it's not going to? Right, so this is the case where I mentioned earlier that when you have an open circle, you may exclude the value from the domain or range and range but underneath I have the red line, right? So in this case, you do include that in the range because of this value right here, okay? So it's the same value at zero. So you still include um, the zero for the range, right? Even though you have an open circle here, but the output or the Y value get replaced by this value. Okay, the whole gap replaced by this value. So still include the zero. Now, so far you include or exclude the endpoints. In the next graph, you see the graph has the arrow at the end to indicate that it will go to infinity. Okay, so the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity.
What about the range? The y value. Oh, one, one. Yes, so from one to positive infinity. All right, any questions so far? Now in the next graph you have is which is it? All right, so the domain for this graph is from zero to positive three. Then there's an open circle, right? So you exclude three from the domain. And then you take another, that's one interval. The next interval is from three to positive six. Now to exclude x equal to three, here's what you do. You use the union notation. So I'm gonna start out with a zero. I go to three, right? I don't want to include three, so that's why you parentheses and then union with three to six. But for six, I want to include the value. What about the range? Start out at negative four. Okay. You go up to negative one, and then there's a break. Union that with zero to positive four. Okay. I understand there is a circle over the circle here, but it gets replaced by this part. Okay. So the range is from negative four to negative one, union with um, zero to four. The last two graphs, can you spend a little bit of time on that? It should be fun for the last two graphs. Find the domain in the range of the function. All right, so for the next one, most of you do this, probably do this. Start out from the left, that means you go from negative infinity to one. Then probably some of you do union from one to two to two. All right, and then probably another union from two to positive infinity. But remember the definitions earlier that I have then correct it's and say it's not always going to be the case. All right, so in this case, you go from negative infinity to one, but you have an open circle here. Oh, it's closed circle, sorry. So from negative infinity to one. All right, if you do union of one to two, And then another union from two to positive infinity. So this brackets actually including the one already. This brackets including the two. So there's no point to actually write everything out like this. Um, and you need to just write from uh, negative infinity to positive infinity. This graph is called the piecewise defined functions that we're going to cover in like in two, two more lectures. Uh, but for now, it's just negative infinity to positive infinity because we already have the bracket at the one and the bracket at the two. So don't worry that in the test, I'm not going to give you this one. Okay?
just want to show you that it feels something is really very with that. And then for the range is from zero to positive infinity. But the last graph, so this one is a little bit easier, yes? More straightforward. The domain is from negative five to negative three. There's an open circle there. Union with negative three to negative one, right? But it's a closed circle. So you include in the negative one. Just continue to um, instead of stopping at negative one. You good with this? And then for the range is from negative two to negative one. You so negative five to negative three. That's not oh, oh, oh. include what negative three because it stopped right there. There's no value defined at that point. Right, it's kind of the hole. You have to jump over it to go to the next part. Right, for the range is from negative two to negative one, union with uh, zero to four. Any questions? One once, one twice. Where do we left over for the board? This one? Okay. Yeah. We have questions if you have them. If you're looking to do about anything, go again. Why is it? Negative one, two. Oh. Uh, so you mean this interval? Right, so the range is from negative two to negative one. Right, but you put that into the y axis. Right, we stop right there, and the next part is starting um, to so there's, there's nothing, there's no perfect in negative one in the Right, please ask questions, right? I won't bite. Right, so in the next example, we're going to include a lot of information uh, in, um, in the problem. So given this graph, you have a bunch of information related to the points on the graph. Um, can you five f of negative six, f of zero, f of six, and f of 11? Right. 
So when they write something like this, they want you to find the output in the input. So when x equal to negative six, what is f of negative six going to be? That is the y value. When x is equal to zero, what is the y value? When x is equal to six, what is the corresponding y value? So we can solve it. Right, so when x is equal to negative something, what is f of negative six equal to? What is the output of that? So negative three, right? So x equal to negative six, f of negative six, f of negative six is negative three. So f of negative six equal to negative three. What about f of zero? x equal to zero, what is the y value? Mm -hmm. Positive three, yes. f of six. Zero, yes. F of 11, one, yes. All right, in part B, is F of three positive or negative? X is equal to three, what is the output? If not gonna know the exact value, but I just want to know positive or negative. Is the curve above the x-axis or the curve below the x-axis? That's the question. Positive, because the curve is above the x-axis, right? So when x equal to three, so one, two, three, right here, right? So the curve, the output is above the x-axis. So f of three is greater than zero. A few years ago, I gave this question in the test, not at this school, not at the University of Cincinnati, I was there. And I asked the question, is f of three positive or negative? The answer the student gave me is yes. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> the person neither give the positive nor negative answer. It's yes. So don't do that, right? Give either positive or negative. Now, what about f of negative four? Is that negative or positive? Got it? Negative. negative, yes. So f of negative four is less than zero. Huh. It's one thirty-five. Oh, today's Wednesday. Yes. That was Tuesday. Okay. Yes. All right. No problem. <laughs> no, I trust me. This sketch was confusing. Yes. Yes. Ignore me. I mean, ignore that part. Not ignoring. <laughs> So next semester, in the fall semester, I have a better schedule for pre calculus and I have two class back to back. I don't know if that's better or not. Is that better? That's what I have. No, it's not. That's what you have. Oh, yeah, that's true. I remember there was a World Cup at the time. In the, the World Cup. And then a lot of students in the back watching the World Cup and you're teaching. The World Cup, the football, the soccer. Never <laughs> All right. Now, for what value, part D, for what values of x is f of x equal to zero? All right, so now the output is equal to zero. What is the input? given the graph. This is another way to say that, tell me the x-intercept. x-intercept, y equal to zero. You follow me? 
So this question is another way to ask what is the x-intercept? Right. And then later on, probably ask the text. Um, this question is another way to ask what is zero, but don't, don't focus on that. So partly the question is another way to ask what is the intercept of the, uh, of the graph. So what is the x value in this case? So x equal to negative three, that's one. x equal to positive six, that's another one. And x equal to 10, that's another one. So negative five, uh, six, and 10. Now for E, for what value of X is F of X of both the X axis or greater than zero for that math? So you have this part of the curve above the X axis. Do you see the red line? That right, those part above the X axis. So you go from negative three to positive six, that's the interval, and from 10 to 11. Yes, sir. It is negative three, sorry. Didn't see that very clearly. So this should be negative three though. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, that's that's a good point. Now, when x equal to negative three, what is the y value equal to? What is f of x equal to zero? So the question is. What x value is f of x strictly greater than zero? So when x when x equal to negative three, the output is to zero. So it shouldn't be included. No. Now if I ask the question f of x greater than or equal to zero, now the same explanation go to six and ten because f x equal to six. The output or have a back to see zero. Why do I include 11? At 11, have a back is not equal to zero. Have a back is a positive number. You with me on that? Do you see the difference why I use parentheses at one place and not the other? Okay. Now, what is the domain of F? So that one is easy. Anyone, the domain of F? Negative six to 11, including the endpoints.
Now, what about the range? Negative 3 to positive 4, including negative 3 and positive 4. So the x-intercept is symbol, the y-intercept is symbol at this point. Hopefully we get that. So I'm going to write it down. So x-intercept is negative 3, comma 0, 6, comma 0, and 10, comma 0. The y-intercept is 0, 3. When you write your answer, please put in some context. Right. Um, so in the last quiz, some of you give me just a number without anything in front of it, right? If you have plus and minus, let's say one, what does that mean? Attach something to them. So x is equal to plus minus one. Give me some context. Or negative three, y equal to negative three. Give me some context. If you don't write x equal to plus or minus one or y equal to negative three, you need to put in the point in the uh what what is this called? Okay. Uh the uh the order pair point. Sorry, the order pair point. Okay, as a point, right? If you don't give me x or y. Okay. Now for what values of x does f of x equal to three? So the output is three. What is the input? You look at the graph, you should see it. Zero, x equal to zero, x equal to four. Then, uh, for what value of x does f of x equal to negative two? So x equal to negative five and x equal to positive eight. With me on that. All right. So I will try to finish this lecture via. Uh, I will record the video to finish up this example. I want to talk about the test on Monday. So will be a, there will be a test on Monday. We use the entire period for the test. Okay. Uh, so later today or tomorrow, I will send our practice exam. And the practice exam is going to be very similar to the actual exam. In the email, I will include the topics that I want to cover, probably from the beginning of time until this point, until lecture nine. Okay. Um, and then later on in the week, maybe on Saturday, I will post the solution of the practice exam. Right. Uh, don't just focus on the practice exam, even though it's similar to the actual exam. I will change the questions a little bit. I will change the number. So try to understand why we do what we do. Try to understand the solutions. Okay. Okay. So we're now going to work on example four. So example four is very similar to example three. In the example, you are given the graph, and from the information in the graph, you can answer the um, questions. Right? So for part A, you want to find the value of f of negative 2, f of 0, f of 2, and f of 6. Mm -hmm. So again, for f of negative 2, that means that when x equal to negative 2, what is the y value? Right? What is the output of um, the function? So when you have f, when you have x equal to negative two, the output is y value, which is positive one in this case. So f of negative two is equal to one. So for f of zero, that means when x is equal to zero, what is the output going to be? In this case, f of zero is equal to zero. Next, for f of two, you have right here, when x equal to two, y is equal to negative two. And for f of six, that is when x equal to six, what is the y value equal to? So it's equal to zero. Now in part B, 
you are asking, you are asked to find f of 3 to see if f of 3 is positive or negative. Okay, so when x equal to 3, right, is somewhere right here between 2 and 4, you cannot exactly pinpoint the value of f of 3, but it's, it, you still be able to uh, tell if it's positive or negative. Okay, so x of x equal to three, then f of three, somewhere right here, is in below the x-axis, so that should be a negative number. So f of three is less than zero. Now, similarly, in part C, you are asked to find um, f of negative one to see if it's positive or negative. So x equal to negative one, somewhere right here. Right? And you go in up and here the point or the output for f of negative one. Again, you cannot find the exact value, but the curve or the point is above the x-axis. So you can say that f of negative one is positive. Now for what in part D, for what value of x is f of x equal to zero, right? So I mentioned in class that this question is another way to ask what is the x-intercept of the functions, right, or of the curve. So in this case, f of x is equal to zero when x is equal to zero, so that one point. When x is equal to four, that's the, another point, and x equal to six. So there are three value of x such that f of x equal to zero. Um, so I have x equal to 0, x equal to 4, and x equal to 6. Now in E, um, you want to know for what values of x is f of x less than 0. So you want to find all the value of x such that the curve is below the x-axis. Right? So this part of the curve... Let me use another color here. So this part of the curve is below the x-axis. So therefore, the x value from 0 to positive 4 is going to be all the x values such that the curve is below the x-axis. So here, uh, from 0 to 4, so that f of x is less than 0. Um, next question, you want to find the domain of the function. So the domain of the function here is from negative 4 to positive 6, right? And you want to include the endpoints as well. Um, when in the test or in the quiz, if you see an arrow, then you can make that go to infinity. Uh, but in this case, you have um, the closed circle at the endpoint. So you want to include the, um, the value of the endpoints. Now for the range, right, you trace on the point on the curve and project on the point onto the y-axis. Um, so the range is going to be from negative two to positive three. And for the x-intercept, um, I mentioned earlier in part A, right, so that's a different way to ask the question uh, for what value of x is f of x equal to zero, similar to what are the x-intercept of the curve, right? Um, but in the case of the x-intercept and y-intercept, it's good to indicate the whole point, right? So x-intercept, e, x that means y equals to zero. So you list out all the points, and that is a zero, zero, um, four, zero, and six, zero. So those are the x-intercepts. And for y-intercept in part i, um, there is only one y-intercept, which is um, the origins in this case, which is 0, 0. Um, and in part j, for what values of x does f of x equal to 3? So f of x equal to 3's x value is equal to 5. So uh, x equal to 5, f of x equal to 3. And... Uh, for the last questions, for what values of x does f of x equal to negative two? So x equal to negative, um, sorry, f of x equal to negative two. So the x value is positive two.
And that's it for me. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions.